Let me show you how to modify the default registration form that comes with Laravel Breeze and add a profile picture with Preview. Let's start by creating a new Laravel project. I'm going to use Laravel Sales for this example. Now let's install the Laravel Breeze package using Composer. Make sure to use the dev flag since we want this as a dev dependency, not intended for production. Once that is done, let's scaffold Breeze resource files, views, routes, controllers, etc. But since I'm lazy, I don't want to be typing vendor bean sale every time, so I'm going to create an alias for it. Now let's run this artisan command to install Laravel Breeze. And then install and compile local assets with npm. The next step will be to run the database migrations with this artisan command. Perfect, now open a browser, navigate to localhost and click the register link at the top to open the registration form. What I want to do now is to add a field where the user can provide a profile picture when they register. And not only that, using Alpine.js we will let the user see a preview of the picture before submitting the form. Open the project in your editor of choice and let's start making some changes. I'll be using Visual Studio Code for this example. Navigate to Resources, Views, Out, and open register.blade.php. I want to put this new profile picture input inside a blade component, so let's add a tag first. Let's put it just above the name input. Use x dash and then the name of the component. I'll call it picture dash input. Now let's go back to the terminal and create a new component using this artisan command. Since this is a standalone component, I'll use the view flag at the end. Since we are going to be adding Tailwind CSS classes, let's run this command to recompile the assets every time we save. Back in our component, let's add a new div to hold the picture preview. Make the corners rounded and give it a light gray background. Add an image tag for the profile picture. Give it a width and height of 24, rounded corners and use object cover. As you can see, the div itself is extending to the full width of the container. To prevent this, let's give the parent div a flex display. Now let's add a button to select the new profile picture. First, let's add another div below the one we just created. And let's use this button component that already comes with Laravel Breeze. The only extra class I'll be adding is relative, and you'll see why in just a moment. For the contents of the button, let's find a nice SVG icon from Hero Icons. And for the label, let's use Upload Picture. To get the contents of the button in a single line, Let's give a class of flex to the parent div. And to align everything, let's use item center. Okay, that looks good. Let's just add some padding in between those two. We can use MR2, that's margin right, on the icon. To align the button in the middle of the image, we go to the root div and add items center. 
into the div containing the picture at MR2 for a bit of separation. And it looks a bit too close to the name field below, so go back to the register view and add some margin to the name input group, like this. Okay, it's starting to take shape. Now let's add the file input. Back in the picture input component, before the button closing tag, add an input of type file. Name it picture and give it an ID of picture. Don't worry about how bad it looks, we are going to fix it right away. First, let's make the input absolute. Next, use inset 0 to make it the same size as the button. And to hide it, let's give it a Z value of minus 10. And just to make sure it's not visible, add opacity 0 to make it transparent. But now we have a problem. Since the file input is sitting behind the button, we have no way of clicking it. And here is where we are going to start using AlpineJS. Let's begin by adding xdata in the root div. This will initialize AlpineJS in our component. Let's leave it empty for now. Let's add a click event to the button with add click. In here, we can use JavaScript to find the file input by ID and trigger a click event on it. Now, if we click the button, we can choose a file to upload. OK, time for the good stuff. Let's add the preview functionality to our input. Just before the last div, let's add a script tag and inside create a function called picture preview. The only purpose of this function is to return an object. Just leave it empty for now. Go back to the top and in the xdata, add a call to the picture preview function we just created. This means that the contents of the object returned by picture preview will be available inside this alpine.js context, which is the entire div. Okay, now let's add a single property to this object. Call it show preview and we'll make it a function that takes a single parameter called event. Now head over to the file input and add a change event with add change. In here we call the show preview method and pass in the event data, like this. We are basically calling this method every time the value of the file input changes and the event parameter contains information about the file we just selected. So, back in the function definition, we can check if the length of the event.target.filesArray is greater than zero. This is true if we selected a file to upload. If so, we create a URL to use on the image tag with url.createObjectURL and pass the first entry of the files array. All we have to do now is find that image element by ID and assign this URL to the source property. And by the way, now would be a good time to give an ID to the image element. Okay, let's give this a try. And there you go, we have a nice preview of the file we chose. Now we just need to upload this file to the server and save the path of the image to the database, which means we are going to need a new column in the user's table. Let's create a new database migration to add the picture column. This will be a simple string column. Since it's not required, let's also make it nullable. Now run the migration and we are ready to store the picture when the user registers. First, let's add the picture column to the fillable array 
in the user model, otherwise it won't work in mass assignments. Navigate to App, HTTP, Controllers, Out and open Register User Controller.php. We will work in the store method, starting with the validation. The picture is not going to be required, but we do want to accept only image files like JPEGs, PNGs and GIFs. Let's add a new line for the picture and we want this to be a file. We can use the MIMES rule to accept only the file types we want. And since we're already here, let's cap the file size to 3 megabytes. Let's use the max rule and we have to specify the size in bytes, so 3 megabytes is equal to 3072 bytes. To store the file we just need to use the store publicly method and specify a path. I'll put it inside a folder called pictures. Storing publicly means that the file will have the permissions to be publicly available to the web. This will return the relative path to the file. Laravel uses the local hard drive by default and will store the files inside the storage app folder. But of course we only want to do this if a file was provided in the request, so let's check for that. Finally, pass the path in the user create method. Before we can test this, we have to go back to the register form and add the ink type parameter, otherwise the file won't be uploaded. Ok, we are ready to test. Let's open a browser and navigate to the register form. I want to make sure the registration still works even if a picture is not provided. So let's create a new test user without picture. Ok, that worked just fine. Let's log out and head back to the register form. And now let's create another user, but this time with a picture. Perfect! And if you check the pictures folder inside storage app, we have a new file with a unique hash name to avoid duplicates, courtesy of Laravel. But wait, if this file is in my storage folder, how can I use it in my view? Well, it's pretty easy actually. Laravel has a handy artisan command just for this purpose. If you run the storage link artisan command and check the public folder, you'll find this storage file here. This is called a symbolic link. Think of it like a portal going into this other folder located in storage. And if you're thinking, hold on, that's not the folder where the uploaded pictures are. Well, you're right. This is because we need to make one change inside the filesystems.php file located in the config folder. Scroll to the bottom and you'll find this section for symbolic links. In this array, the key is the symbolic link created in the public folder and the value is where the symbolic link points to. So instead of storage, let's use pictures and this will point to app pictures. Ok, back to the terminal, let me delete this symbolic link first and now let's run the storage link command again. We get the message that the public pictures folder is now linked to the storage app pictures folder. And with this we can finally display our profile picture. Let's start the compilation process again and go back to the editor. Open the navigation layout located inside resources views layouts. Find the settings dropdown section and above the username let's add an image tag. This image tag should only be visible if the logged user has a profile picture, so let's add an if statement and check for the value of picture. 
And for the image source, we use the asset helper method and pass the value of picture. Let's give the image a height and width, make it round with rounded full, object cover and some margin to the right. Now to align it with the name, let's make the wrapping div flex and align items center. Now back in the browser, if we refresh, we can see the profile picture. But this is just for desktop. We need one more change to show it on mobile. Back in the navigation layout, let's copy this if statement. Scroll down to find the responsive settings option section and paste the code just above the name, like this. Now we can see the profile picture in small devices. And that's all for this video. As always, click the like button if you found this content helpful. And consider subscribing so you won't miss out on any future videos. I'll see you in the next one.